Welcome to Math in a Box with Susan Johnsey. We will be studying uh, trig identities in this lesson that require some prior knowledge. You need to have already studied the trig identities that use the sum, the sine of the sum of two angles and the cosine of the sum of two angles. I have written the identities over here on the right for you. I've also written some of uh, trig values that we need to know. The sine of 30 degrees has a value of 1 half, but also the cosine of 60 is 1 half. The sine of 60 is the square root of 3 divided by 2. It, that is also, though, equal to the cosine of 30 degrees. The sine of 45 and the cosine of 45 are both square root of 2 over 2. There are a few other um, things that you should remember. The sine of 90 degrees is 1. Um, the cosine of 90 degrees is 0. Uh, we will be using several of these identities and trig values throughout this lesson. So if you're not sure what I'm doing, you may want to go back and find another lesson. In this lesson, we are going to prove that the tangent of the sum of two angles equals the tangent of the first angle I've called it A plus the tangent of the second angle, I've called it B. And this is divided by 1 minus the tangent of A times the tangent of B. Now this is an identity for the tangent of the sum of two angles. We're going to prove that this identity is true. Now you may ask me, what is an identity? I keep saying the word identity in this lesson. An identity is an equation that is true for all values of A and B. It does not matter what values of A or B that I use for, uh, you know, for an angle. These are the angles. I can use any values that I want, and these two uh, expressions will be equal. Now, in normal equations that you've worked prior to now, the equations were true only for certain values of A or B. They weren't true for any value that I wanted to choose. We would always solve and find what particular values the equation was true for. And it was only just a few numbers. These are true for all numbers. Now let's prove that this is true. We are going to use an identity about the tangent. The tangent is the sine of an angle, and our angle in this is A plus B, divided by the cosine of A plus B. Now again, this is prior knowledge. The sine of A plus B divided by the cosine of A plus B is the definition, one of the uh, identities that we use for tangent. Now let's use the identity that I have written up here on the right, the sine of the sum of A plus B. That will be equal to the sine of A times the sine of oops, sorry, times the cosine of B plus, then we switch the angles around, we write the sine of B times the cosine of A. Alright, now let's do the denominator. The denominator is the cosine of the sum of A and B, and I'm using the second identity that I have written up here. That will be the cosine of A times the cosine of B minus, notice there's a difference in the signs there, the S-I-G-N's, sine of A times the cos uh, sine of B. Alright, now let's look at this as four big expressions. I will try to color code this so you can keep up with it a little better. I am going to take all four of these, I'm putting the first one in a pink box for you, there are four of these expressions. Now I'm going to divide each one of these by the same thing. You know when we have an equation, uh, when we have a fraction, if we start dividing some part of it, we really have to divide all parts of it by the same thing. That way we do not change the value of the fraction. It will look different, but it will have the same value. I'm going to divide all four of those by the cosine of A times the cosine of B. Here's the first one that I had put in the pink box for you. 
All right, now let's put the plus sign. Now I'm going to go with this expression here in the purple box. Now remember, each one of these I'm going to divide by the same thing. So it takes a little bit of time to write all this out. I'm dividing each one of them by the cosine of A times the cosine of B. All right, let's make our long fraction bar here. And let's go to this, this expression here that I'm putting in the brown box. We're going to take that cosine of A times the cosine of B. And again, I'm going to divide it. I have to divide all four of these by the same denominator, cosine A, cosine B. Now, someone studied these quite some time ago, and they decided the best way to prove this identity was to do this division. Oops, I forgot to change color for you. All right, well, anyway, the fourth one here is the sine of A, sine of B, and we're dividing it, too, by the cosine of A times the cosine of B. Now let's look at each one of these big uh, four big expressions. In the first expression, notice that we have a cosine of b and uh, divided by another cosine of b. This is division, so that would leave us a 1. 1 times the sine of a will, of course, give us just the sine of a. So the first big expression there becomes the sine of a over the cosine of a. All right, put our plus sign. Now over here, let's see what divides out. We have a cosine of a, and in the denominator, we also have a cosine a. So we are now have sine of b over the cosine of b. All right, long fraction bar. Now let's look at this expression here. And notice that we have the cosine of a divides out, it gives a with the cosine of a giving us a 1, but we also have the cosine of b divided by the cosine of b. 1 times 1 is 1. Now to write your negative. Now this last expression, you will see that nothing divides out here. So we have the sine of a over the cosine of a, and I'm going to kind of group these so that the two that have the a, angle a are together, and then the sine of b divided by the cosine of b. Now what does this equal? Well using the identity that I mentioned earlier about the tangent, the tangent is the sine divided by the cosine, we can change our first fraction now, this one, to the tangent of a. And then similarly, we can change this expression. I'm using orange here. That will be the tangent of B. All right, let's draw our fraction bar, long fraction bar here. When we have 1 minus, that's the sine of A divided by the cosine of A, so that becomes the tangent of A times the tangent of b. And if you'll look, that is the identity that I had written up here at the beginning of the problem. We have proven it to be true. Now let me show you an example of how we use these. They help us simplify big expressions. Let's look at the tangent of uh, 30 degrees plus the tangent of another 30 degrees. And let's divide that by 1 minus the tangent of 30 times the tangent of 30. Well, if you study this a little bit, you'll see that it is this expression that I have here. I have actually let A be 30 and the B also is 30 degrees on both of these. So this expression that I just wrote is equal to the tangent of the sum 
of 30 degrees plus 30 degrees. Now I didn't have to use 30 in both of those. I could have used other angles. The tangent of 30 degrees plus 30 is the tangent of 60. So this big expression here became one trig function, the tangent of 60. And if you happen to know your trig functions for the uh, tangents of our uh, angles, it is equal to the square root of 3. I want to give you one more formula our identity, uh, the tangent of a difference, the tangent of a minus b. It's very similar to the other one. We will have the tangent of a minus the tangent of b and long fraction bar and we will write in the denominator 1 plus the tangent of a times the tangent of b. So this is the tangent of a difference. Remember the word difference means subtraction, two angles that are being subtracted. This is the identity that you can use. Let me give you another example. Let's find the tangent of a minus b if we know that the tangent of a is two-thirds and we know that the tangent of B is one-half. Alright, the tangent of A minus B using the identity that I wrote above. Let me change to another color. I'm using this box here now since I did say we were going to find a difference, find the tangent of a minus b. Uh, that's equal to the tangent of a, which we said is two-thirds, minus tangent of b, which is a half, divided by a long fraction bar, one plus the tangent of a, which that was the two-thirds, times the tangent of b, which is one-half. So you have to be careful with your adding and subtracting and know this part in the denominator is multiplication. Now you're going to have to remember how to use uh, work with fractions. There are two ways to do this. Uh, you can get a common denominator in each of the numerators and denominators here and simplify it, or you can multiply using an LCM. An LCM is 6 or you can use it as a denominator. I'll change each of these to a 6. 2 thirds becomes 4 6 and 1 half becomes 3 6. Draw your long fraction bar and uh, 1 plus that divides out, the 2's divide out here and so you get 1 third. So 1 plus a third is what? That's going to be 1 sixth divided by 4 thirds. You get a common denominator of 3 and add those together. So what is 1 6 divided by 4 thirds? Well, hopefully you remember division now for fractions. 1 6 times 3 fourths equals 3 20 fourths which reduces to 1 eighth. So the tangent of the difference of these two angles is 1 eighth. Now we didn't actually have to even find the angles themselves. The whole time we were working just with their tangents. The tangent of pi over 4. Uh, if you've not studied radians before, you can write 45 degrees there. That's the same thing as 45 degrees. The tangent of pi over 4 plus a. Alright, now this is the tangent of a sum, so we'll use the first formula up here. That is equal to the tangent of pi over 4 plus the tangent of a. Long fraction bar, 1 minus the tangent of pi over 4 times the tangent of a. 
So I'm using this formula up here at the very top because we're taking the tangent of a sum. Now let's simplify this. Now remember the tangent of pi over 4 is also called the tangent of 45 degrees and that is 1. 1 plus the tangent of A is our numerator. Draw your long fraction bar. Now again the tangent of pi over 4 is a 1. So all of this is a 1 times the tangent of A. So we have 1 minus the tangent of A for our denominator. So our expression, the sum of pi over 4 plus A became 1 plus the tangent of A divided by 1 minus the tangent of A. The tangent of the pi over 4 uh, completely disappeared because it was equal to 1. Well, this is Susan Johnson with MathInABox.com. I hope you have learned a little something about working with trig identities that involve the sum or the difference of two angles. If you have any questions, you may email me at MathInABox at gmail.com. Thank you.